because of its camber challenging switchback. The Kiwi Connection claim another Volvo victory is on the cards here today, but not everybody agrees. Yeah, well, they've, they've got a good chance because they were here last year, but we weren't, and uh, we've got a turbo as well, so I, I think we'll go wrong. <laughs> Robbie win again here? Well, maybe, maybe not. Well, last year he was lucky enough to have a win. You know, we, we were reasonably close behind him in second. But by the, by the end of the race, his car was uh, looking a little second-hand. Uh, it was getting a few leaks here and there. As a matter of fact, I think it had more leaks than Mikhail Limitov. And, like, they both had Kiwi pilots. Well, as you can see, not everybody agrees that Robbie Francovic is a past-the-post winner. Hello and welcome to our telecast of the second round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. We've got a very heavy bill of fare here today at Simmons Plains, including the opening rounds of the Western Underwriter Superbike Series and the first round of the Australian Formula 2 Championship. As far as the touring cars are concerned, here's the top ten. Pole position has gone to George Fury in the Nissan Skyline. His lap, 59.16 seconds. Sharing the front row of the grid with him will be Robbie Francovic in the Volvo 242. From position three, Peter Brock in the first of the mobile dealer team Commodores. From four, John Harvey's team partner. From position five is Graham Crosby of New Zealand in the Commodore. From six, Dick Johnson of Queensland in the Mustang. From position seven, car seven, Charlie O'Brien of Queensland in the BMW. From eight, Jim Richards, the national champion in the JPS BMW. From nine, Tony Longhurst in the BMW 325, from position 10, Gary Rogers in the BMW 325, and rounding out the top 11, John Smith in the Toyota. Nissan returned to Australian touring car racing seven days ago. George Fury won pole position for the season opener at Amaru Park. And seven days later, George has done it again, this time at Simmons Plains. That puts you on pole for today's race, and two out of two, that's not bad. Uh, it's, it's particularly pleasing because uh, we did this time a race boost, Whereas we believe the Volvo hadn't had the turbo screwed up a bit, so so it, it all uh, all was well for the race. Of course, that's the complaint, I guess, the Commodore drivers and a couple of the four drivers are going to make that you play certain strokes with a turbocharger in qualifying. Well, uh, we we don't uh, the, the car is so new that we don't really believe in doing that at this stage. We'd like to see the car have a reliable run, and it's been it's been really fantastic, and it's it's got plenty of power. So that's not really our limitation in any case. So uh, uh, we, we like to uh, play fair with our competitors. Well, you're on a circuit that obviously suits horsepower output. Yeah, yeah, the, the circuit suits both the Volvo and, and our car. And uh, I hope, I'm looking forward to a good race. Are the problems from last weekend, George? Uh, the last weekend was a rear wheel bearing failure, uh, which overheated the back tyre and it's uh, it's just a one-off thing that, that I hope will never, ever happen again. Still a very, very successful debut, two poles in a row. Uh, I think I'm wrapped and I hope everybody else is because, uh, and, uh, and I hope we can wrap it up this weekend. George Fury talking with Mike Raymond about the potential outcome of the Australian National Line Australian Touring Car Championship round two, of course. And we look at Peter Brock here in car 05. Problems last weekend. Rear tyres going off on the tight, twisty infield area of uh, Amaru Park and uh, I think ultimately finished in something like fifth place and this weekend he's hot to trot on the second row of the grid his teammate there John Harvey helping us out this afternoon in the commentary in car three carrying sevens race cam and it'll be a classic confrontation between the big V8s and the two turbo cars this afternoon well the second round of the touring car championship has attracted uh, 11 entrants a lot of people say that's not uh, a quantity feel well, it certainly isn't but it the 11 that we have is absolutely a quality field. So uh, I think we're looking forward to uh, a great scrap up the front of the field, certainly between the two uh, turbocharged cars, George Fury and Robbie Francovic. They're out on their warm-up laps at the moment. Tucked in behind them, Peter Brock and John Harvey. They'll split the second row. Graham Crosby, who has also uh, joined us in commentary while the bikes were on this afternoon, has qualified very strongly on fifth. Let's take a look at the uh, starting grid for the Australian National Line Cup for touring cars. Pole position has gone to car 30, George Fury in the Nissan. From two is car number 10, Robbie Francovic of New Zealand in the Volvo. From three is 05, Peter Brock in the mobile Commodore. From position four, car three, John Harvey in the Commodore. From five, car two, Graham Crosby of New Zealand in the Commodore. From six, car 17, Queensland's Dick Johnson in the Mustang. From seven is car seven, Charlie O'Brien in the BMW 635. From eight, car number 62, Jim Richards in the BMW 635. Then from nine, car number 25, 
five, Tony Longhurst in the BMW 325. For position 10, car number 23, Gary Rogers in the second of the BMW 325s. And rounding out the 11, car number 16 is John Smith in the Toyota Corolla. And there's Johnny Smith on the racetrack at the moment. Just going through on the inside with uh, Robbie Francovic in car number 10. And Francovic sits on the front row, going very steadily through that corner. Two warm-up laps prior to the start of the Australian National Line Cup here from Simmons Plains. Oh, and watching John Harvey come down to the hairpin at the end of the straight for Bramble's corner. And uh, he was really locking up there under brakes, as you could well see. One of the interesting things this weekend is the fact that the dealer team in their 05 car, that is the Brock car, are using 17-inch uh, rims on it and uh, the, the Brock Equip has decided to run, I think, the Momo wheels and Pirelli tyres on John Harvey's car, whereas they'll run the uh, BBS rims and Bridgestone tyres on the Brock car, and that will be very interesting indeed. So Harvey, of course, uh, just getting some warmth into tyres and brakes and settling himself into the car as they come towards the completion of the end of their two laps warm-up. Dick Johnson, car number 17, he, like Brock last weekend, had problems. A heavy car on a tight track, scrubbed up a set of tyres and effectively couldn't go punch for punch with the leaders. And he's looking forward to lifting himself up on the points table after this second round of the championship with still eight remaining as the circus moves around the country. But Mike, these turbocharged cars have come to the fore for season 86. They certainly have, Neil. We were missing, of course, Nissan uh, last year in 85. And nobody really thought that they would come back with their new Group A Challenger for 86 and steel pole for two consecutive touring car rounds. I mean, Jim Richards was in that situation last year where he was taking uh, pole position week after week. But uh, George Fury and the Nissan Skyline, Freddie Gibson, they're very, very confident they can go on with today's race. They believe that they have cured the problems of uh, last weekend that prevented them from uh, a better showing in Amaru Park. And of course the man they all have to beat, the man who won here in uh, very, very straightforward circumstances last year was Robbie Francovic. And there's the man that we had as guest commentator before, Graham Crosby, second in the world 500cc road racing championships in 82 and a former Formula One world champion in bikes and the bumper to bumper Channel 7 entry from Brisbane, Charlie O'Brien big things from Charlie this weekend because he's actually managed to put the JPS cars behind him. And of course Jim Richards today, the Australian Touring Car Champion starting out of position 8. And I don't think Jim has been that far back in a touring car race since uh, we went of course to Group A at the commencement of 85. Stand by for the start of round two of the Australian Touring Car Championship from Simmons Plains in Tasmania. The flag is up. They're racing and George Fury zips off the starting line and the Nissan Skyline gets away smartly indeed with Robbie Francovic coming up on the outside. Peter Brock made a good start, so too to Dick Johnson who does a little shuffle here right behind the two mobile team Commodores. So Francovic drops to second. George Fury leads into Bramble's U-turn for the first time. There's Francovic. They were then followed by Peter Brock getting up on the inside of John Harvey. Then we've got Dick Johnson and the Green Mustang stretching up on the inside of Harvey as they come down to the Goodyear Sweeper. Well, a tremendous start from George Fury in the Nissan. The car was terrific in yesterday's practice session. They seem to have cured their wheel bearing problems from last weekend at Amaru Park. And Fury made it two out of two for pole position and has made an absolute blinder of a start in the opening lap. The car tends to get sideways a little, so George is going to have to be very careful with tyres. They're running Avons on the Nissan, but a most interesting vehicle. Across the top of the hump for the first time, it's Francovic in second position, then Brock in the mobile Commodore. And look at this, Fury getting the skyline sideways. Reminiscent of his rally days, I would suggest. Then it's Johnson, then Brock, then Crosby, then Richards. And Richards has come up very well, as, as uh, you can well see there in the background. Sitting right in behind uh, Graham Crosby. Here's Robbie Francovic, a little closer this time to George Fury and the Peter Jackson Nissan, number 30, to the Brambles U-turn. Brock is in third, Johnson is fourth, Harvey goes back one spot as they work down towards the Goodyear sweeper again. And here's uh, Brock, very, very close indeed. Looks like the uh, bumper to bumper entry, BMW, in a spot of bother out there and parked on the uh, side of the road. Brock yeah. now having a lash at Francovic under brakes. But Robbie's got a very nice line for the corner. And 
manages to close the gate once more and all the time you can see that gap closing between these two cars in second and third and the leader George Fury. Coming up to the Mazda Hump, George Fury, the Audrey Farmer, Francovic, there he is in second, the Mark Petch Volvo, and in third place, Peter Perfect, and Dick Johnson joins the freight train in the green Mustang as they come under the bridge, the second lap completed. Crosby goes through as well, and here is Francovic, he gains all the time here on George Fury as they come up to Bramble's corner, and Brock is right on the pace with them. The Francovic Volvo this weekend is running the engine that they used at the Wellington Street Race, the New Zealand engine as they call it, and it's got around about an extra 20 brake horsepower. And yesterday's qualifying from the Volvo may have been fractionally distorted because they used what's called a Pirelli D7 tyre, which is an extremely soft qualifying tyre. And now as the car goes out on the D5 tyres, it's perhaps not quite as quick. But Brock really trying hard under brakes as they go for the left-hander at the end of the back straight. And again, the Volvo closer to the back of the Nissan. Look at Francovic, the machine gets sideways as he comes out of the left-hander, all using plenty of the road as they go across this bump. Some of the cars actually getting airborne yesterday as they fling them for the left-hander through the pits. Here's George Fury coming up to the bridge. Francovic is right on his tail and will pull to the outside as they come down. Has he got enough to be able to beat him to the corner? He's on the wrong side. But Francovic still sitting in second and looking threatening at this stage. Peter Brock doing a fine job in third, sitting right behind those two turbocharged cars. And behind Peter Brock, of course, Dick Johnson and the Mustang. Then John Harvey, Graham Crosby is the next one, followed by Richards. And then well back there to the 325s. I'll be very interested to get the clocks on this time and see just how quickly they are circulating. Fury has managed to open up that gap just fractionally again over Francovic. And Francovic is a very busy boy at the moment because Brock is needling all the way. And the fellow that has done a remarkable job as well as Dick Johnson, because according to the way that he qualified, you would not have thought that he had a chance of keeping with the leaders, but he's right in there at the moment. And look at this as the three of them come back down towards the left-hander at ANL corner, and it's Fury. Great scrap this Fury with Francovic tucked up here, just trying to get the line right as they come through the sweeper, back onto the start finishing straight and the run up to Bramble's corner. They're just marginally clear of Peter Brock and Johnson. So we have uh, a great scrap going for the lead in the second round here at uh, Simmons Plains. George Fury surrendered the lead to uh, Robbie Francovic inside of probably five laps at Amaru Park last weekend when he had problems. Today the car is looking very sharp and very strong through the Goodyear sweeper. There's the gap, first over second, and then of course the gap back from the Volvo to Peter Brock. 61.1 seconds for George Fury on that occasion. So about a second off his qualifying time, but very quick in race trim. The Nissan team have been saying all week that they were setting the car up for qualifying in race trim. And of course, in the last few moments of the second session yesterday, George um, called the blitzer to take Paul away from Robbie Francovic, who everyone thought will be sitting there and leading this race. But the, the new look, Nissan Skyline, Peter Jackson entry running very strongly at this stage. Crosby still on the pace too, sitting back behind them. They've managed to open up a bit of a gap over Jim Richards. As a matter of curiosity, just to show you how far these Group A cars have come, Mike, the lap record here for touring cars is still held by Brock at a time of 58.51. So they've already got to within a second of those old Group C times in cars radically different. There's George Fury in the Nissan, Robbie Francovic and Peter Brock. To the Goodyear sweeper. And just how well that new Nissan Skyline sits on the road. It's doing everything uh, it should under brakes giving George Fury no anxious moments, and Robbie Francovic's car also looking strong at this stage. The Nissan is a perfect equation on paper, about 320-odd brake horsepower and about 1,035 kilograms. Perfect power-to-weight ratios, and George Fury just the man to give it absolutely everything on this circuit. Fury, Francovic, a little bit more horsepower and a fraction more weight. But Robbie is rapidly becoming the man to beat in this Australian Touring Car Championship this year driving with... Well, here he makes his move. Well, thought about it. Well, and to George Covered, we can see just how quickly the Nissan got wide. It's getting closer, Robbie Francovic, as they come along Castrol straight towards the uh, Goodyear sweeper. We'll have a look how they're running. One, two, and three. George Fury leads round two. Robbie Francovic, Volvo power in second, and Brocky is third.
And welcome back to Simmons Plains. John Harvey in number three, just coming up the outside of Dick Johnson to take away fourth spot, but they have quite a gaggle of cars battling for that fourth spot, let me tell you. There's John Harvey just in front. There's Dick Johnson tailed right to him and uh, not too far back behind them. Graham Crosby keeping the two of them quite honest. Well, Crosby, in fact, is right behind Dick Johnson at the moment as they come down to this left-hander at a &L. And this has been a tremendous battle. You can see Brock in the distance. This is for fourth, fifth and sixth. And there's Crosby in the background. So there's Brock in third, chasing the two turbo cars. And then we've got Harvey and then Johnson and then Graham Crosby. Coming up to Bramble's corner. The rest of the field you'll see just exit the turn now. There's John Harvey dipping in. Dick Johnson is very, very close as they come out of here. But Harvey's car seems to have a horsepower edge as they go down the Castrol Strait and they'll swing right now into the Goodyear Sweeper. By G. Holt Harves is sliding around at the moment. And Crosby having a look on the inside. Dick Johnson, of course, carrying our seven race cam and being followed by a lot of Queensland viewers. You look like it's pretty busy out there, Dick. Oh, mate, those Commodores, you know, they've got more BHP than Robert Holmes at court. <laughs> <laughs> well, the turbocharged cars seem to be having their own little dice, and, of course, there's this next gaggle, including yourself. Yeah, mate, but we're not out of it either. No, long way to go. Francovic uh, tailgating fury at this stage. The yeah. car feel good? The car feels real good. You know, it's really got the wood on the Commodores under brakes, but here goes another one. That's Graham Crosby coming up. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Okay. Sorry, Graham. Yes, it narrows up coming out of there, doesn't it? Not wrong, especially when he's on the outside. Okay, this is where horsepower comes into play, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> what horsepower? I haven't got any. That's terrible. He even waved at you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like everyone's trying to set a breakneck pace for this race, Dick. Yeah, well, we'll just sit back. They'll have their problems, maybe. All right, we'll let you continue. Thanks for the chat. We'll come back to you later. Not a worry. It's Dick Johnson. As you see, Dick tra trailing Crosby as they drop down into the left-hander here, the tight one. Let's have a look what's happening back in the lead. George Fury still there, but getting closer is Robbie Francebeck, and he pulls to the outside just to let George know he's there and still very, very competitive. Great scrap. Fury, the Nissan Skyline, Robbie Francebeck, the Turbo Volvo. And the team, of course, last year, the Mark Petch team that did the Australian Touring Car Championship as privateers with very, very little financial support from sponsors. And uh, I would think in the next uh, seven days we're going to hear of an announcement that will keep Francovic and the Petch team very, very competitive throughout 1986. Because I think, according to the rumours, they've landed a big sponsor. And that's going to make life a little easier for Robbie Francovic behind the wheel. At the moment, though, he's working on George Fury. Fury still continues to lead. Here's the scrap. It's getting closer. Brock just lurking in the background. John Harvey is fourth. Brad Crosby is fifth. Dick Johnson is sixth. To give you some idea as to just how good the development's been on the Volvo, they've pulled some two seconds out of the car in the last 12 months from its last visit down here. And we can see how well it's performing now as Francovic has a look on the outside of the Nissan. George watching his mirrors, as you can see. Now Francovic has a dive for the inside. Back to the outside again. It's a game of cat and mouse and it remains pretty much as you were as they come back out of the turn. And I think the thing that shocked everybody about this Nissan, Michael, is the fact that it really is a very quick motor car. There was no doubting the fact that the Volvo was unbelievably fast in a straight line, and I think there's finally another car out there that can equal it. Well, it's certainly showing here. Peter Brock sitting just back behind them. He's probably about all five, six car lengths. The Harvey, another five or six back. Then five or six to Crosby, and a similar gap to Dick Johnson. That's the pattern of the race so far. And uh, Jim Richards well and truly off the pace here today. On the leaders, he would probably be all six or seven hundred metres behind them. There's our third place driver, Peter Brock, his last race in Australia before he joins Alan Moffat, who's already in Europe, for their opening bout of the European Touring Car Championship at Monza in two weeks' time. Peter Brock, of course, is a man who... Uh, has got a tremendous reputation, Bathurst, Sandown, the European Championship, hopefully, this year. George Fury being harried by uh, Robbie Francovic's Turbo Volvo. They're coming up on John Smith's Corolla. It's taken them 
quite a while to, to gain on Smith, so Smith's setting a good pace in the smaller Toyota Corolla. Being the obliging driver that he is, I was going to say he's going to open the door up and let them all through. Well, they found quite some time in that vehicle as well. Smithy's around about three or four seconds faster than he was here last year. And yes, he now the lets yep, the top guys through. The thorough professional. I've got the clock on George Fury again. We'll just see how those lap times are coming along. It was a 61-1 the last time that we looked. And do not discount Peter Brock in this battle. He's still looking very good. This track not nearly as tyre sensitive as Amaru Park. Franz Vic lurking all the time, just waiting, I guess, for Fury to make a mistake. Out of the left-hander and back down this very uh, long right-hand kink. Castrol straight, as they call it. And watching the clock, we'll have a look and see how that time is, as I said. And Fury goes through. Again, 61-1, so maintaining the pace that he set up in the opening laps. Still some fuel to burn. And tyres will now be operating very well, so I would suggest they'll get right down onto the 60s and perhaps even crack a 59 with the sort of pressure that Francevic's got on at the moment. And check this gap between Francevic and Brock, because in fact I think Brock is closing and it's 1.8 seconds. You can see the different wheels on the Commodore for this second round. The BBS spoke wheels. Here's Peter Brock, car number 05, and Brocky, of course, a winner at Bathurst eight times. He's won the Australian Touring Car Championship in 80, 78, 74, third in the 85 Touring Car title, a winner, of course, in the 86 Wellington 500. And he's bound for Monza in a fortnight with Alan Moffat, and they'll be contesting routes of the European Championship. He's going strongly here today at seventh place, running third on the road behind the two turbocharged cars of George Fury and, of course, Robbie Francovic. Brock about oh, 100 metres back now behind uh, George Fury. And Fury has Robbie Francovic close through this part of the course. He's able to uh, outdistance the Kiwi every time they go down the back straight, but Robbie closes up and gives him uh, a torrent time from here down to uh, Bramble's corner. There are the placings though. Fury leads round two. Robbie Boy's in second and Commodore Brock is third. Jeez, the car feels funny. Can you put those wheel nuts on properly? You may not think your car's nuts. worth insuring. The wheel nuts! But you're still liable for all the damage it causes. Advance Double AMI's $80 property damage policy. It pays for the property damage your car causes. So call Advance Double AMI. We keep our promises. Welcome back to Simmons Plains, where car number 10, Robbie Francovic, in the last corner, was just edged by George Fury to take over the lead. There you can see one of the BMW 325s that uh, Francovic has already put a lap on, separating himself and Fury. That drops George back into second in the field. Peter Brock is still close at hand, running in third. But Francovic has taken a little longer to take the lead in this race. Of course, he led uh, lap for lap all the way last year to, uh, to win the Simmons Plains uh, round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. But he's in front. We'll be able to see now whether George Fury can, in fact, pull back that gap or whether uh, maybe Fury was just uh, holding up the Volvo in the tighter parts of the course. Well, the gap is now starting to open, and I'm about to put the clock on Francovic as he goes by, and Fury will fall very quickly into the clutches of Peter Brock if he's not careful. There's one and a half seconds separating Francovic and Fury, and I'll just check the gap between Fury and Brock, because Brock is really mo mobile at the moment. I say mobile in the mobile Commodore, it's been hard to get out. There's Robbie Francovic, car number 10, and as Neil has just said, he's opened that gap over uh, George Fury. There's Brock. It's 1.2 between Fury and Brock. And just behind Peter Brock, of course, his team partner, John Harvey. And they've reached half distance now. There's Fury going through. Brock is the next one. And one of the 325s, Crosby goes through as well. And Crosby getting closer to the back of Peter Brock. Dick Johnson, the one who's falling down through the field. So there is... 
Fury. And can he hold second position? You can see it is half race distance, lap 20 of 40. And the thing that is a little bit of a worry with this Nissan is the fact that the car is set up with a very low ride height, extremely hard springing. And as George said yesterday, we're still not happy about the amount of oversteer that we've got. The car is extremely taily. We've seen a couple of examples of that already and it does tend to cook up back tyres. And when that happens, you get to uh, half to two thirds race distance and anybody who's still got tyres in good shape can give you a very hard time. Clock on Francevic at the moment. We'll see when he comes underneath the bridge what sort of lap time he's putting in. And a 61.1. So that seems to be the popular time of the day. So Francevic has remained consistent. So, Robbie Francovic in car number 10, the winner here at Simmons Plains last year, and he now leads the Australian National Line Cup. Fury is in second, Peter Brock still third. Back at Simmons Plains, the Australian touring car champion, Jim Richards in car number 62, the JPS BMW 635. Hasn't been the best of weekends for the, uh, the JPS team, nor for Jim Richards. Of course, the eighth qualifier, eighth fastest qualifier for this race, and still running seventh on the road at the moment. And we haven't seen Jim that far back. Well, I can't recall how long ago. He didn't have a great race here last year. They had problems, but uh, he's, it's been a long time since we've seen Jim Richards so far off the pace with this car. And of course, the Volvo is increasing the lead all the time. Well, it was in fact this round last year that Jim had all his problems. He finished in fifth position at this championship round in 1985. They had quite a few problems with the car. I think one of the strange things that happened was they broke a gear lever, as my memory recalls. Yes, in fact, it was. I've got some notes here. It was a, a gear lever that broke in the Richards car last year. And that's a problem that's been plaguing a few of the cars, including Graham Crosby's car last weekend. But uh, poor old Jim just does not have the brake horsepower necessary at the moment to match it with the V8s like this car here, Dick Johnson's car, although the BMW about midway through the year does get some more components homologated by the Bavarian boys and uh, it will be get, uh, getting back up there rubbing elbows, I'd say. There's Dick Johnson, car number 17, carrying our race cam and I think Dick would subscribe to the old theory that nothing beats some horsepower. Right, Dick? You couldn't say a true word, Mike, I tell you. Tell you what, the only thing I should add to this motor car now is a radio, I think. <laughs> we'll stick her on stereo tent from Brisbane and we'll just have a listen, I reckon. Well, tell me this, looking ahead to what perhaps uh, might be around the corner for Ford followers that follow you throughout the season, so you're having a bit of a battle in horsepower. What good news can you give them, any? Well, possibly the fact that when they do homologate the Sierra, we could be uh, looking a little better than what we are now because it's a turbo car like the Nissan. Same configuration, basically. What are your thoughts, then, on uh, the way that the Nissans have been able to come out and put a car on pole for two consecutive rounds? Well, actually, I expected that, really, because uh, the car is very, very quick, and I reckon will continue to be so and just get better and better every meeting because uh, they have the right ingredients. And what about of uh, Jim Richards, who doesn't seem to be having a good weekend? I mean, he gave you a terrible time last year. And, uh, of course, uh, this year you have a situation uh, where uh, you're very, very competitive against uh, Jim. Well, what actually happened, Mike, is the fact that the bits and pieces we were supposed to get in January last year, we never got till August because of a, a little typographical error that they made in the paperwork and uh, hence we've had it since August and became a lot more competitive but if we had had what we got now for the Touring Car Championship last year I reckon we would have been pretty close to winning it. And what are your thoughts on this particular circuit, Dick? A good one? Mate, I reckon it's a ripper but it's a circuit that you really like a lot of horsepower and uh, it's, it's a good circuit to drive it's very, very hard on brakes it's not so bad on tyres, so, you know, all round, it normally gives you a decent sort of a race. Well, the reliability factor of the Mustang must uh, count in your favour because uh, you finish all the races and you, and you pick up points. Well, the thing is, Mike, these races should be 500 k's. I reckon I'd be looking better, eh? 
All right, Dick, thanks for the chat. We'll follow your progress a little later in the field. Thanks, Bill. Graham Crosby, of course, we've been following as well during the race today, and here he is closing up behind John Harvey in number three, the second of the dealer team Commodores. And he has been the, uh, the surprising kid on the block over the last two weeks. Robbie Francovic was the scene stealer last year. That's Graham Crosby's turn this year. I think he's done a tremendous job for a relative newcomer. Of course, he drove the BMW 635 late last year in the New Zealand Touring Car Championship, and then we saw him early this year in the long-distance races over there. Uh, switch to the Commodore. This is the X-Ray Smith Denny Hall AC and B Commodore, a car that was originally built and prepared by Peter Brock and the Mobile Holden Dealer Team Special Vehicles Division in Melbourne. And now Graham and his sponsors, Trans-Tasman Insurance and Bob Jane T-Marts, have uh, picked up the car. And uh, as he said to us earlier on, by hook or by crook, he'll be there for the entire 10 rounds of the championship. And look at, the, at this at the moment, right up onto the back of John Harvey. Oh, locks a break on the way in. He was telling me yesterday that he was trying to use third gear through that left-hand turn onto the straight, whereas Harvey and Brock were coming through there in second gear, trying to keep the car smooth and silky, a bit easier on tyres. And I think that uh, our two guest commentators are going to have a scrap here in the very near future. Yes, John Harvey running there, fourth on the road. Right behind him, Graham Crosby in car number two. And uh, Crosby's pulled that gap uh, back on Harvey in the last five laps. He is getting much, much closer. Down through the fast part of the track, the Goodyear sweeper. There's Crosby. Car number two, very close this time to John Harvey's. A battle under brakes into the left-hander at Coca-Cola. Dealer team car gets out of there very, very smoothly indeed. Crosby's quick through the tight sections of the course. Here he comes. It's the tightest part through here of the Simmons Plains track, 2.41 kilometres in length. Laps 30 of 40. 40 laps, the distance of the Australian National Line Cup, round two of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Crosby, car number two, getting closer, but Harvey, of course, driving superbly in the number three car, still running, of course, in uh, fourth place, and Graham Crosby is in fifth. Race leader, of course, still Robbie Francovic in car number 10, the Mark Petch Turbo Volvo. Peter Brock and George Fury still dicing, and in this great scrap as Johnny Smith in number 16, the Toyota Corolla, allows through John Harvey and, of course, car number two, the one driven by Graham Crosby. Up over the Mazda Hump. Now, Johnny Smith sits in. Stays close to them through this part of the track, and as soon as they get onto the horsepower areas, of course the V8s go away. Recapping the race for you, Robbie Francovic of New Zealand leads in the Volvo. George Fury in the Skyline is in second. Peter Brock is third in the Commodore. Back at Simmons Plains, and Peter Brock has got problems with 05, the mobile Commodore. Laying an oil slick out, and Brock is slowing. He's going to the pit area. Number 05 holding down third place for most of this race, and in he comes. Wretched luck for Brock in the first two rounds of the Australian Touring Car Championship, an enormous cloud of smoke from behind the car. It did appear to be running quite well. Oh, they've got a fire in the engine bay, so it's losing oil everywhere, but it would appear to be just a leak or perhaps a seal blown because the thing was still charging along very nicely. He didn't appear to have uh, lost much time to George Fury. But it's a busy scene there in the dealer team pits at the moment. Not the sort of thing you want to be fiddling around with in a sprint race, I'm afraid. So bad luck for Peter Brock in the mobile Commodore. Obviously, the new combination of 17-inch tyres and rims was working well. Brock was on the pace behind Fury. And starts it up again. We'll keep an eye on them and see what they're going to do. What is he doing? Getting in, getting out. It's running. A confused scene. Pouring out smoke from the left-hand bank. Turn it off. No, I'd say it's curtains for Peter Brock. So the King of Moomba won't be crowned this weekend. Well, bad luck indeed for uh, Brocky, who takes the helmet off. Would love to have won here today, or at least put a little more pressure on the uh, turbo cars that are running first and second. 
been a hot uh, a hot run for Brocky here at uh, Simmons Plains. He walks back, takes a look at the car. There's going to be no win for the Mobile Commodore team here today. The man looking good at this stage is Robbie Francovic. In car number 10, there he is entering uh, Coca-Cola Corner. Still with a gap of probably 150 metres over George Fury in the Nissan Skyline. The car running very, very strongly indeed. As it did at Amaru Park last weekend, the only thing that went off on the uh, Volvo the tyres in the final uh, 10 or 12 uh, circuits. Then, of course, Jim Richards came on to put the pressure on him. Francovic went on to win, and he's looking very good here with the laps running out. He certainly does. I've got the clock on him once more. We've still got George Fury, of course, in second place now, about seven and a half seconds in arrears. So, Robbie Francovic looks like making it two out of two, and not only that, a repeat performance from last year. And as Mike suggested before, there are rumours flying left, right and centre at the moment regarding the Volvo team. All kinds of speculative deals. But the rumour is, I think, that uh, the team will announce something fairly shortly and the plans appear to be quite big. Here's that scrap still continuing between John Harvey and, of course, uh, Graham Crosby coming up to put a lap on one of the BMW 325s. There's uh, Crosby going through and they put a lap on Gary Rogers. But uh, despite everything that Crosby's been able to throw at John Harvey, he still hasn't been able to pull back that gap of about 25 metres. It's been going on and on for uh, the last 10 or 15 circuits. There's Harvey in car number three. He, of course, has moved to third on the road. Fourth on the road is Graham Crosby. And then, of course, in fifth place, Dick Johnson, followed by Jim Richards in the Mustang. And uh, just out of curiosity, I had the clock on Robbie Francovic that time through, and the lap time was 61.7, so he's dropped off the pace by about half a second, but still quite comfortably in the lead. And John Harvey looks like picking up more, more points. And one man who will be picking up points at the moment is John Smith in this car. It's a Class A car, two-litre vehicle. As John described it, it had a birthday prior to the start of this year's championship. They've done a lot of work on the car. They've taken some 30 or 40 kilograms out of the car, picked up about 25 brake horsepower, and according to a little bit of mathematics that we did last weekend, had John been driving in Aberdeen Park, he probably would have finished in around about 9, 4, 10. So this little car doing exceptionally well. And, of course, one of the unusual things that's happened this year with this constant rearrangement of classes by the Confederation of Australian Motorsport is he's third in his class behind the two BMWs, the 325s being driven by Tony Longhurst and Gary Rogers. Let's have a look at the Castrol scoreboard and check placings. Robbie Francovic, the leader, being followed by George Fury in the Nissan Skyline. And in third place, Johnny Harvey in the Commodore. Castrol straight, Robbie Francovic, car number 10, the final lap as he makes his way down towards the Goodyear sweeper and he's opened that gap all day over George Fury. Robbie Francovic, who won this event last year and he's looking very, very strong for two out of two to start the 1986 series. Fury, about 200 metres further back on the road, runs in second place. John Harvey is in third, Graham Crosby is fourth. And there's Robbie's wife. Uh, Mrs. Francovic would be very proud indeed of her husband today. Coming up to the Mazda Hump for the final time. The big crowd here at Simmons Plains giving him a tremendous reception as he makes his way into the switchback area and comes out of Australian National Line corner. The hand is out the window. Francovic strikes two from two out of the Australian Championship Series for 1986. A great drive from Robbie Francovic. There's the gap back to little George Fury from Albury. And he takes second spot on the road today. And third place will officially go to John Harvey coming through there at the moment. Graham Crosby behind him. And of course, Dick Johnson and Jim Richards. Well, a great second round of the Touring Car Championship. We've seen plenty of action. And Robbie Francovic will be talking to him, confirming Francovic wins. Fury takes second. John Harvey picks up third. Our Kiwi friend has made it two out of two, and Robbie Francovic, this weekend, we were talking to you. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. You know, it was a great weekend, and I was very cocky, and um, wrong to be cocky, of course, because um, the skyline was flying, but the Volvo is so reliable and so strong now that we just got to go from strength to strength, I hope. By gee, you did it easily. Did you call that easy? It looked like it. <laughs> Wasn't too easy with those first laps when I was following no. George. But you pulled out a very healthy gap and I think surprised many by maintaining a very consistent pace. 
Well, the boys told me I had to win by six seconds, so um, I wanted to make sure that's what it was. I'll put you on the spot. What's happening in the future? There's lots of rumours abounding. Oh, I just hope that um, Mark Pitch Motorsport gets their deal with Volvo. Well, congratulations. We hope that you do very well at the next round at Sandown. And Robbie Francovic, two out of two, you can't do better than that. So it's not a bad act, is it, Mike Raymond? From our Kiwi friend. Thank you. No one could... Congratulations, of course, to Robbie Francovic, who has done uh, superbly two from two. Just confirming those placings again. Robbie Francovic, the winner of the Australian Touring Car Championship, round two here today from George Fury and John Harvey. The third round of the Australian title will, of course, be held at uh, Sandown in Victoria on Sunday, April 13th. Then, of course, we'll have a full field for the next telecast of April 6th, which is the second round of the Better Break series from Amaru Park Raceway in Sydney, live and exclusive to Seven Sport. Well, it's been quite a day. It's been quite a fortnight, actually, from Robbie Francovic. And it looks like that uh, Volvo Motorsport are going to support his racing efforts. That's good news, because uh, this... Uh, extroverted Kiwi who came to our shores last year and of course upset the apple cart here at Simmons Plains um, finished off the season winning he started this season by winning round one and winning round two we hope you've enjoyed our telecast of the action from Simmons Plains we look forward to your company next time when Seven Sport takes you motor racing This afternoon's motor racing was brought to you by Goodyear, leading the world in tyre technology.